Says the Urachaim, Parshas Shemois. Vichashi Anu Oisu can hear be Vichenifreds via Kutsum and Pnebin Esro, Esther Achaim. The Possek seems to say, Vichashi Anu Oisu, as the Mitzrayim would torture Klal Esro, can hear be Vichenifreds. Says the Urachaim, what is the connection between the amount of torture, the amount of Taurus that the Goyim did to Klal Esro, to the strengthening of Klal Esro? Says the Urachaim, Ayer of Neimus Akosva Pimashapiris Bezoet. The Rechaim says the Zoya Kodesh says on the Pasuk in Kehelas, Esa Sheshola to Adam Ba'Adam Leraloi. When one person would hurt another person, Leraloi, it would harm him. So the Zoya says that when there is Nitzoytzei Akdusha by a Goy, when this Goy comes and hurts a Yid, that Nitzis of Kedusha gets transferred over from the Goy to the Yid. And if Chas Vashon, there was any nitzitz of Tumah by the Yid, then that nitzitz would also go back and be transferred to that Goy who's hurting him. Says the Rechaim, V'sizbara b'chines ara mechelik, Atoi v'sizom b'chel b'chines ara. U'shnei pratam e'nu remuzim b'ayim l'ra'aloi. And of course, these two ideas, that there is a transfer of any b'chines of ra from the Yid that goes to the Goy, and any b'chines of toiv that might be in the Goy that will go to the Yid, or marumas in this word of the ra loy, that the fact that this person is hurting another person, this will bring the ra to him. And the same way, the other way around. Says the Rechaim now, this Zoya Kodesh on the Pasuk in Kehelis. I can understand very well what the Pasuk here tells us. As the Mitzrayim would hurt and torture Klal Yisrael, with that, any toiv that was in the Mitzrayim in the first place would be added, would be added to Klal Yisrael, and with that would strengthen the Chele Katoiv in Klal Yisrael. And maybe we could connect this to something that Reb Simcha Vassaman once said. Reb Simcha Vassaman once was asked to explain the idea of the Holocaust. And he said a vote from his Rebel Khan of Asaman, who maybe said it over from the Chafetz Chaim. And he said like this, there was once a person who came from the city and he came to a farmer and he asked him to please teach him how to farm, how to, how to make bread, how to grow something. And the farmer didn't like speaking, he just took him out to the field and he showed him that he started working on the field and he brought his machinery and he started working on the field. And the city man started screaming, what are you doing? You're ruining, look, a beautiful field and you're ruining it with your machines. And the farmer stayed quiet. Then the farmer goes and he brings these nice sealed packs of seed and he starts pouring it out on the ground. And this city man is going out of his mind. I don't understand you. Here you have beautiful seed and you're putting it into the ground, you're ruining it. Fine. Then he goes and he brings a different tractor that has pipes and he starts watering the fields and the city man is completely going out of his mind. I don't understand you. Fine, you have fresh water and you're pouring it out on the ground, but the farmer just stays quiet and he says, this is it, we're done for the day. Fine. The city man goes back, he thinks this farmer is crazy anyway. After a while, the farmer comes and he gives him a call, come out, I want to show you what we're doing next. City man comes out and of course he sees the beautiful nice crops growing and this farmer goes and he brings his machinery and he starts cutting it down. And this city man is having a meltdown from here to, to, to the end of the world. Are you crazy? Finally I see something growing beautifully and nicely and you're cutting it down. Then the farmer goes and he starts taking these, um, these stems and he starts taking out the kernels and the city man is going crazy. Why are you ruining these beautiful stems? And of course, then he takes the kernels and he puts them into a, a, a windmill or whatever type of mill he had. And he starts grinding them down to make wheat, to make flour. And the city man is going crazy. You have such beautiful kernels, such beautiful seeds. And you're going and you're ruining it. Finally, he has beautiful flour. They're sitting in nice bags. And the farmer goes and he takes the flour and he starts mixing with water. And the city man goes crazy. What are you making? This sticky stuff going on here. Then he goes and he makes it into a beautiful shape and he finally puts it in the oven and the city man is like, that's it, I had enough. After all this that you did here, all the crazy things, you go and you throw it into a fire and then an hour later, out comes beautiful bread and everything is understood. And Ibsim Chavasman said, that's how you understand this world. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not have to explain anything to us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the farmer. He takes care of everything. He'll take care of the end of the picture. Yes, in between there are things that look bad. And maybe this is what the Rechaim is saying here. It's true, sometimes it looks bad. Things happen to Klal Israel. Things happen to individual people. But what's really happening is what the Zohar is telling us. There's Nitzotis of Toiv. There's a Bechina of Toiv out there in the world and they have to connect to us. They have to connect to Klal Yisrael. And the only way for that to happen sometimes is for things to happen. Have a wonderful Shabbos.